Hi, this is a heat engine cycle example video on Carnot cycles. Let me start out with a PV diagram. Because the Carnot cycle is a purely theoretical cycle, um, it's difficult to start out with a physically intuitive place. So let me just start out at the high pressure, low volume point. You might call this the point where the engine has the most energy and it's about to do work. It's not technically true, but let's just start there. So from this point, the engine undergoes an isothermal expansion from A to B. And this follows an isotherm, a curve on a PV diagram that indicates constant temperature. Let me call this TH or high temperature. Then at point B, the gas undergoes further expansion, this time adiabatically. Zero heat transfer, so the temperature of the gas goes down. This slope is steeper, so the state of the gas ends up on a different isotherm. This isotherm might be associated with temperature TL, low temperature. After this, the gas undergoes isothermal compression, reaching point D. And D is exactly the right point where if the gas undergoes further adiabatic compression, then it'll reach point A, completing the cycle. So that's the kind of cycle. For the process from A to B, isothermal expansion, there is going to be a heat inflow so that the gas can remain at constant temperature while it's doing work. And since there is no heat exchange along the process BC, this is actually going to be our heat input, QH. And along the isothermal compression, C to D, there is going to be heat outflow from the gas so that once again the temperature will remain constant while work is being done on the gas. And since the heat exchange from D to A is zero again, we can call this QL, our heat outflow. All right, so we ask the same questions as before. That is, what are the network done, heat input, and the heat output? Let me write down some equations that will be useful as we work through this example. There's the ideal gas law, as usual, and the first law of thermodynamics. And assuming this is a monatomic gas, we have following expressions. One of them you have seen, the internal energy of the gas. And the other is the adiabatic relationship. This was derived in, I think, chapter 3. What was derived was there was a relationship between pressure and volume in an adiabatic process. And the relationship is that pressure times volume raised to some numerical factor gamma is constant. And what this gamma is depends on the type of gas. It's defined as the specific capacity under constant pressure over specific capacity under constant volume. And for monatomic gas, this turns out to be 5 over 3. And if you go back in the chapter and read it, this is related to the degree of freedom that's expressed in the internal energy. It's all very interesting, but for us, um, it'll actually turn out that gamma cancels out anyway, but in some questions, this might be relevant, especially numerical questions that give you some specific quantities and ask you for some specific quantities. All right, I think that's all the preliminary information, and we are ready to jump right in. So let's just start with the process A to B, the isothermal process. We've done this before. In a toy example, toy model 2, so because it's isothermal, we can start out with a statement about the internal energy change. We can say it didn't change. So that means from the first law of thermodynamics that heat exchange from A to B is equal to the work done along that path. And we worked this all out before, so because pressure is changing, we have to express this as the integral of the infinitesimal amount of work done or pressure times the infinitesimal volume integrated from point A to B. We can re-express pressure in terms of volume using the ideal gas law, nKT over V. 
Here the temperature is constant, so let me put a subscript to remind me it's actually just a number. And the integral goes from volume A to volume B. So here, as you can see, there are many different pressures and volumes. So I'm just going to specify any particular value using the subscripts. It'll turn out that because of these constraining relationships between pressure and volume, that there's really only about two free parameters here. But until we reduce it down, I'll just use the subscripts. All right, so we've done this integral before, so let me just write down the result without wasting too much time. The antiderivative of one over V is natural log of V, plug in the limit, I get NKT times the natural log of VB over VA. And this result is greater than zero, as we should expect. The gas is doing positive work, so there must be heat inflow into the system to allow it to do this work without changing internal energy. All right, so this time I'm going to leave my answer in terms of the temperature because I have a sixth sense about that being path to simpler expressions. All right, let's look at process B to C. This is new. It's an adiabatic process, and that means by definition, heat transferred during this process is zero. All right, so that's interesting. Let's look at the, the first law of thermodynamics. So Q being zero means that the work done is minus of the change in internal energy. And because we are given the temperatures, or at least I'm pretending they are given, it'll turn out that that's actually a quicker way to calculate work than to try to calculate work by using definition of work. So we are going to do that. So the change in internal energy is 3 halves N K final temperature minus the initial temperature. Or working out all these double negatives, we get 3 halves N K TH minus TL. All right, that was surprisingly simple. If we had gone the longer route involving the definition of work, well, it would have taken longer. We would have to do the integral. And I don't have space for that here. All right, let's keep going. The process from C to D is very similar to A to B. It's an isothermal process. So change in internal energy is still zero, which means the heat flow in the process C to D is equal to the work done again. So you can set up all the same things we did before. Let me just write down the result here. It's going to be NK times the temperature, different constant that's involved here, TL, times the natural log of the ratio of the final volume over the initial volume. Now, I see that VD over VC is less than one, so this natural log is going to be negative. So let me use a little bit of uh, logarithm algebra to make that negativeness more obvious here. I was treating that Vd over Vc as Vc over Vd raised to the power of minus 1, and then pull out the minus 1, and that's where the minus 1 comes from. Now it's clear that this quantity is less than 0, so work is being done on the gas. So the heat must flow out of the system so that the internal energy doesn't increase. All right, the final step here, D2A. So in D2A, the compression continues, but because the heat exchange is now zero, internal energy is allowed to rise, and we can use that change in internal energy to calculate the work done. The exact same thing we did for B2C, Except this time, we expect the change in internal energy to be positive, increasing, so the work done will be negative to indicate work being done on the system rather than by the system. So since it's the exact same calculation, let me just write down the results. Um, you've seen the process before. Since TL is smaller than TH, I know this is negative, so let me pull out the negative to make its negativeness clearer less than zero, work is being done on the gas. All right, let's uh, start out with the first question. What is the network done? And as you look at the expressions we derived, I hope you notice something interesting. 
The work done during adiabatic expansion B2C is equally magnitude to the work done on the gas during the adiabatic compression from D to A and opposite in sign. So these work done during adiabatic expansion and compression will just cancel each other out. And we only need to calculate the network between the isothermal expansion and isothermal contraction. All right, let me write that out. NKTH times the natural log of VB over VA. And I'm adding the other thing, so minus NKBTL times natural log of VC over VD. Hmm. This is probably a good point at which to the reduce the number of variables we have in our expression. VB, VA, VC, and VD. I think I'll be able to express the ratio VC over VD in terms of the ratio of VB over VA. Um, let me make a little space here to work that out. All right, so that's probably enough space. So the point C is related to point B by adiabatic process. So that means this relationship holds. PB VB raised to gamma is equal to PC VC raised to gamma. All right, and I also need one for VD, which is connected to A by adiabatic process. So PA VA raised to gamma is equal to PD VD raised to gamma. Oh, so I can just take the ratio of these two equations and I'll get something that simplifies to a degree. PB over PA times parenthesis VB over VA raised to gamma is equal to PC over PD times parenthesis again, VC over VD raised to gamma. Now, here's the fact I am going to use. The points B and A are related by isothermal process, which means this ratio can actually be related to the ratio volumes. In fact, this is uh, PB over PA is equal to VA over VB, or you could say this is a VB over VA raised to power of minus one. So I can actually combine this ratio with the existing ratios just by changing gamma to gamma minus one. And I can do the same thing here because the points C and D are related by isothermal process. So this amounts to being the ratio VD over VC. So I can just modify this as gamma minus one here. So this is the relationship you end up with. VB over VA raised to the factor gamma minus one is equal to VC over VD raised to factor gamma minus one. And since it's the same power, that actually means VC over VD is equal to VB over VA. So I can do this. Get rid of this raising to the power of gamma minus one and say VC over VD is equal to VB over VA. All right, let me make the change here and change VC over VD with the VB over VA. Then we can simplify this more by factoring out all the common factors, NK, natural log of ratio volumes times the temperature difference, TH minus TL. It's a surprisingly simple expression for the network done. This is what I mean. Carnot cycle is a simple process. It's designed to make the thermodynamic properties very simple. The heat input is here. It's this one heat input that we already calculated. This is our QH. And QL comes directly from the quantity we calculated for the process C2D. Let me just make the quantity positive and make the substitution we just discovered. That's it. We are done. Now, there are some additional questions we can ask here, but let me do that in the summary video. 
comparing all four realistic heat engine cycles that we will compare to each other. For now, this is complete set of expressions to work with, and I'll save these highlighted quantities for later reference in the summary video. Until then, bye.